turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, please. And again, reminding us, that's what we've been saying so much, that the, the flesh is weak. It's weak, weak, weak. Weak. Um, we're not capable, all these things, we're not capable of it. We desire to act righteous. It's not possible. Miss Davis, would you read Second Corinthians chapter 7? Verse 1, please. Everybody, 7 1. Therefore, having these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness. Perfecting holiness. Now, there's a phrase you're not going to hear in our self focused, self exalting. American church. You are not going to hear that. I could name names, but I'll try to be good. Um, there I am, trying to be good in my own flesh. Um, maybe I should just name the names and be done with it. Ah! Uh, false teachers, you know, that everything in the world is about you. Um, you know, uh, God wants you this, and God wants you that. He wants you wealthy, happy, and... Um, uh, I, I can't even imagine all the stuff that, that they're pouring down, you know, and you get it draws the crowds in. This is what God wants for you. Uh, really. Um, it's the, the, the uh, appealing in that way is, is an appealing to the flesh in, in the deepest ways. Uh, but perfecting holiness is um, the, the word... Perfecting is the it's it comes from two two uh, words Greek sections of words that we've talked about before epi what a surprise there epi in other words greater than epidermis I say that all the time so you can get get it the epidermis is above the dermis epi it's greater than um, epithumio. The, the things that are beyond normal thought. And in this case, it's epitelos, uh, or a, a teleos, a, to the, the, that form of the word that is, that is above what we would call perfection. You're kidding. I mean, perfecting. It, it's, it's the, 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 the greatness gets greater than what we would say, oh, that's perfect. It's, it literally is, when he's saying perfecting, well, now the next word is bad enough, too. Holiness? By the way, I, I looked this up, and I'm, I often say, okay, you know, the, 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 the word so that you can understand it is separate. And we just keep it at that. I mean, I get so sick of these, oh, holiness, separateness, especially in, in the, conflict, the context of a deity. And your, your brain turns off right away. I mean, you're going, what does that mean? You know, and you, it makes no sense. So we try to bring that word, sancti sanctify, holiness, whatever, as separate. It just, just think of it as separate. But in, in looking at the Greek again, uh, somebody else took it down a little bit deeper. And I, I don't, I've not brought that definition up uh, or uh, translation of the word, but it's maybe even better to find is just simply, are you ready for this one? Different. Just different. Well, they're different. Remember, we're a peculiar people. Different. It's different. But to be different, we're separate, too. I mean, it's, it's so different that it's, it's separate. And God is different. I will be treated as different. Yeah? Um, but we don't. 
we we bring God down into and I understand that he's come down onto our level and he does that on purpose. But when we treat him as profane, and by that I mean as just day-to-day trash, um, this is this is wrong in the way that we're supposed to. He he is different. He's completely different. And when you look at that, let's let's read it again. Therefore, having these promises, and we're not going to go back to see what the, these promises, because we are we are plucking this one out because of of time factors. Um, let us cleanse ourselves. Okay, for that that's the self. The cleanse our self of all. Now, you can't do that. All defilement of what? Flesh and spirit. Paul, what in the world are you talking about? I can't cleanse myself. We need to kind of get out of the way that we will understand in American English. If you're doing it yourself, well, you're doing it on your own strength. But see, he adds something in that that really goes along with with what we're talking about this morning and what we've been saying. Let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting uh, above the normal perfect, above what? Perfecting separateness. Perfecting separateness. And here is where the things that we've talked about so far today begin to hit me. Perfecting differentness. Perfecting separateness. Perfecting holiness. In the fear of the Lord. And it was here that I just began looking back through a a bunch of my notes on the fear of the Lord, and we're going to start looking at that a little bit. We, we, we're we not going to go through the whole teaching, because teaching in the fear of the Lord is rather deep, but I want to uh, at least say these things, and then before we go into a few scriptures, that you've heard me say before. <clears throat> when I first began to look at the fear of the Lord, and this is the way that my brain understood it, my mind understood it too, and the way that I've heard it taught, and the way that I continue to hear it taught, it's that you are afraid of God. I mean, when you talk about, I'm afraid of the Lord, I'm afraid of this, afraid of that, well, that's the way that we speak it uh, in American ease English. And so your your mind goes, I, I and, and I've always had a problem with that. I think there's so many people that do, as I think they, they should. How why am I supposed to first I'm I'm being required to work up an emotion. That's what I at least what I think. Fear. I'm supposed to be afraid of. Fear. I'm supposed to fear God. <clears throat> now that's a different phrase altogether, but when when I look at the fear of the Lord. I'm afraid of the Lord. I'm afraid of God. And yet I'm supposed to love Him. And then I'm supposed to believe that He loves me. Uh, and I'm supposed to believe that in His loving of me, that He loves me so much, He'll send me to hell. Uh, no, no, He loves you so much that you choose you choose your own way in going to hell. <clears throat> that He loves me so much, but that his son couldn't save me from going to hell. Oh, he could save you from going to hell, but you have to choose. But the Bible teaches me that I'm enslaved. I mean, do you understand? I mean, the the whole fairy tale thing that we've come up with doesn't make a lot of sense. And I really struggled with that, looking at it. And uh, one day, as, as I've told this before, the Lord's I was meditating on scripture and and he suddenly spoke uh, and not physically audibly but in my my heart I knew the voice and oh and he said you 
are Michael Davis of Burnett, Texas. You know, you're you're kind of going. Thanks. Is this a curse, or is it, you know, I mean, is it a blessing? What what's the deal here? Now, I obviously when he says things like that, you know, I mean, it's this bait. You're trying to wake Davis up. Will you please listen for a change? Okay. What the? And I said, yeah. And he said, you're Michael Davis of Burnett. Okay. But you see, we would normally don't say it that way. Hi, I'm Michael Davis. I'm from Burnett. <clears throat> from. Archaically, it is used that way. Uh, of Burnett. Of Burnett. You'll, you'll see it today used that way at times. It's perfectly good English. And the Lord began to speak to me. It's not the fear of, in other words, I'm afraid of God. I'm afraid of my Heavenly Father who says He loves me. I'm afraid of Him. How can I be afraid of Him? I, you know, I, I, I want to get close to you, but I'm supposed to be afraid of you, and this doesn't make any sense. It's only because it doesn't make any sense. Um, <clears throat> he said, no, 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 no. The, it's the fear from. It's, 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 it's the fear that's of me that I give to you. And we're going to read some scriptures that will make you understand this, I think, a lot more. But it's the fear that is from God, the fear from the Lord, from the Lord. And by the way, I, I don't want you to think that I just went, okay, I've, I had this feeling and that I thought I was being told this. I checked God out uh, with a couple of scholars, one, one pretty well-known Hebrew scholar and, and a Greek scholar also. And, uh, the Hebrew scholar, Dr. Koch, Carl Koch, laughed at me, and he said, "Okay, Michael, you're 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 getting it. That's exactly what that means. It doesn't mean you're afraid of God. It's the fear that God gives to you, and that fear that He gives to you does different things in you, and it's the fear from the Lord that does these different things. We'll talk about that in a minute." Uh, the Greek scholar looked things up and got back with me, said, I'll have to take a look at it, got back and said, you know what, I think you're exactly right. That's the way that it is normally used. It is the fear from God. Now, we're going to go and talk about that later. I want to come up with the second phrase that we see in Scripture, because I had a problem as I was looking at the fear from God, the fear from the Lord. You can kind of go along with that, and we'll show you how, but... The second phrase is, is fear God. You are to fear God. And I went, well, what, is, what does that mean? How is that supposed to work? Is that I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of you. He just said, I didn't say to be afraid of me. I said to fear me. And when you look that, that fear up in the uh, original language, it's not just this, it's not, how to say this, it is, first, it is not necessarily a uh, an emotion. We have the unfortunate tendency to define things, especially concepts in the Bible, and the enemy, I believe, is behind this. We define them all in terms of emotion. Love is a perfect example. Oh, I really love that. I really love this person. I really love chocolate. Um, uh, I don't love chocolate the way I love Mrs. Davis. I, I have laid my palate down for chocolate, but I've never laid my life down for chocolate. Uh, maybe when I eat too much of it, I... Perhaps my bios is in some serious trouble if I eat too much of it. But <clears throat> love has different ways that we love. And agape love means even if I'm not feeling it, 
It's not an emotion. I mean, Mrs. Davis and I don't sit around and have these uh, it, this this emotional. Well, I just want to sit around and stare into your eyes and never move at all. Or wait a second, we do. Or no, I don't know if we do, but I do. Look, put those eyes back up here so I can stare at them. Um, <clears throat> we. This needs to be edited. What? Nothing. Um, <laughs> if if you walked around with that type of emotional uh, response, if we did that constant. We really does. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I lost my. If we if we had that type of emotional response constantly, you wouldn't get anything done. I wouldn't be able to, to teach. She's keeping her eyes down so I can still be able to teach because she keeps interrupting me with just looking at me. Um, what is it? Are you over there praying in tongues? God spite him. And in the same way that we should not define love emotionally all the time. There are times it's appropriate. But we define it as, as a fact. It, it's, it's not only a fact, it's, it's a force in our lives. Agape, love. Um, in the same way, guilt. Guilt is not uh, a, an emotion. Guilt is a reality. Guilt is who we are. Uh, the things that I have done, I'm guilty of those. And the guilt is a reality. I can feel guilt. There's times that it's an emotional response. I think it's probably more shame than, than guilt often. Because guilt is simply, I understand and I realize I did that. That's a fact. You don't get emotional about facts. I mean, usually anyway. Um, and the, the fact that I'm, I have guilt in my life is different than the shame that I will feel because of that guilt. In the same way of, uh, I'll feel bitterness towards somebody that I've not forgiven. It's unforgiveness in my life that the issue, not the bitterness. <clears throat> the bitterness is simply the way that it's expressed on the outside. Um, so, this fear, when you look at it, is not necessarily one of Emotion. In fact, I would say, honestly, when you look at the, at the definition, it's not. It doesn't mean to feel a particular emotion. It means to uh, act as if there was that emotion there. Now, don't get me wrong. I think if we are fully in the presence of God, that's not true. See, I can't say that. <clears throat> when I have been deeply in the presence of God, fear was not part of it. When he manifested himself in such a depth, there, I, there was no fear. <clears throat> Absolute love cast out fear. Uh, simply, when it happened, just overwhelmed by feelings, but it wasn't feelings of fear, it was feelings of love, feelings of being loved, feelings of, of a closeness that I've had <clears throat> never felt anywhere. Uh, Mrs. Davis and I can love one another. <laughs> Mrs. Davis and I can love one another. Um, but, but the thing that, I mean, I could, I could go up to her and, and say, uh, I could go up to See, I come up to her, and I'm going to tell her I love her, and she is saying, Mike, you're so bad. <clears throat> this is so painful. Um, I can express deep love for her, uh, and I may be feeling this, this deep, deep love because I keep looking in her eyes. And so I've got this, but the one, what I cannot do is I cannot make her feel that love. I can say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Um, and it doesn't make her, I can even act like I love her in, in ways that she goes, oh, that's very nice, thank you. But it 
does not make her feel the love that I may be feeling for. I can't do that. I can't transfer my the sensation that I'm having to her. Um, <clears throat> but God, when you're in his presence, can do that. He permeates you. I mean, I'm serious. It's, it's, he, he, he permeates you. He changes you with it. Uh, it's like nothing that I've ever experienced ever. And was completely shocked when it happened. So, in the same way, how do I go through life? I go through life functioning with my, by the strength of God, I lay my life down for Father and for Mrs. Davis. She's the, and so the agape is there, but it's not accompanied by necessarily emotion. And so, how does what does this have to do with fearing God? That I hold God, my understanding of God, my belief in who He is, with a place of special. Um, <clears throat> his, uh, we could say it, unapproachableness. Except in Christ, He's approachable. Bold, I approach the eternal for how how can I do that? Because I'm in Christ. Am I going there on my own merit? On my own merit, I should fear that I'm doing that. It's and so in Christ I can boldly approach, but I also know I'm only boldly approaching in in him, my cloaking device as it were. I'm approaching him in that way, but knowing without that cloaking device, <clears throat> I should be very much afraid of that. Um, you go to the zoo and uh, you see a tiger. <clears throat> you're amazed at the, the, the beauty, the monstrousness of the thing, but the, if you're up close to one, the monstrousness will, will get you. Every once in a while, you know, you'll see a, a picture of this is how big a tiger really is compared to a human. Oh, dear. Uh, or they'll talk about something like a 15-foot great white. Well, shark. Okay, a 15-foot great white. That, that's pretty large. You don't get it. You, you don't get it. He's almost three times longer than you are. And width, we're not even going to talk about that, the girth of the, around this thing and how many tons does it weigh. Uh, and you, you can't imagine that, the, the strength, the power of that thing. When you're closer to it, you, you begin to get a little bit of the emotion. Okay? Ooh, that's a big critter. You're close to a tiger. That's a big critter. <clears throat> With God... It's not that I'm required to be afraid. It's that, and, and sometimes the, there are different versions that will say uh, awesome, reverence, that kind of, and that's, that's, uh, that is okay, but as long as you understand those things are not emotions. I mean, it keeps trying, they keep trying to go, think of him emotionally. You can't drum up emotions. I used to really concern my, wow, I don't love God. I, when I was younger, you know, I, I don't love God. I, I didn't know how to love God. And I would go, okay, I'm going to love God, but it didn't happen. Why? I'm working it up. I'm going to have love now. And, it, of course, it didn't happen because it was not love that was defined emotionally. It was love that was defined volitionally, volitionally, by my will, that he is the object of my love, and that will only be that way when I keep his commandments. So, there is fearing God, which is not, I have an emotional response, but it is, that's God. 
I mean, this is God. It's the idea and the greatness of, and all of those things wrapped up. And I would think probably producing a sense of awe. But again, even then, not defined emotionally. This is who God is. Fear God. But the fear from the Lord is something he gives to you. The fear, and I'll just give this real quickly. The fear from the Lord is to depart from evil. Wait a second. What, what does that mean? If you fear God, if you're afraid of God, you'll depart from evil. That's what we try to get it into, but that's not what it's saying. God is giving you fear, and it's from Him. That fear from Him in you is going to make you have a particular response. And, and you've all felt it at different times. You may be around somebody that kind of gives you the <clears throat> willies. I don't know if that's a biblical term. Probably a theological term. There were those eyes again. Um... You're in a particular part of a town, or you go into a city, and you're going, wow, what is that that I feel? Uh, that God will give you fear, that you fear something. Um, uh, for a long time here, and, and where we lived before, we had a lot of scorpions. This is Texas. And... Uh, I could step into a room and I would literally instant. it would be a dark room and I would know there's a scorpion in here. That's the fear from the Lord. Thank you, Father. He didn't want me to get stung and I didn't care to either. Uh, it, it, but I, I'm serious now. It would be 100% of the time. I would step in and, and it, the, the ones that are really exciting is when he's, he's in the ceiling crawling across. You know, ah! <laughs> he's heading toward the bed. Um, woo! Fear from the Lord. Okay? But fear from the Lord is also the temptation is front of you and he's he's gone. And there's this fear that's in there. We'll try to ignore it, of course. But the fear from the Lord is to depart from evil. The fear from the Lord is to help you to do that. And this is this is uh, we, we're going to look at some scriptures here in, in a bit. Uh, Miss Davis, what did you have to allow on that? Anything? Well, I had, I mean, I've shared before with the refrigerator story, meditating on the fear from the Lord whenever I was, you know, our refrigerator didn't work. And um, the Lord speaking to me about not asking, we hadn't asked him to fix our refrigerator. And when I prayed for the refrigerator and the refrigerator was healed, I mean, basically immediately started working. I had that sense of, God just did this. Just kind of, not out of breath, but this, Lord, you, you just did this. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, wow, you just did this. This It was just, wow, you know, it was, you know, just God, you did, you just did this. And it was, wow, I guess, but it wasn't, um, it had become such a part of our life to see the miraculous happening that it was just, it, the word is awe. When God does move in a powerful way, there is a this, at least what I've experienced at different times, just an awe of, of God, you did that. And, um, uh, it, when you experience it, you know that's that's the fear from the Lord. It, it, it's just it's hard to put into words, but it's it's recognizing that He is separate, and there's this awe about that. You know, we walk in often knowing, wait, He is different. He's separate, but when something like that happens, there's just a, the re, the reality of that that He is so separate from us and that he has condescended and he has manifested himself and does manifest himself to us in powerful ways and um it when 
the Israel crossed over the Red Sea, it says, then they feared the Lord, the Lord, and they put their trust in him. And it just does something. You know, the fear of the Lord was Jesus delighted, said he delighted in the fear of the Lord. And it was, it's even a word that has to do with perfume. There was just this delight in uh, the, the reverence, the awe of who God is. And I think that that is a lot of it. It's hard to put it into words. It's hard to describe it. Um, but uh, when you've experienced it, and then you go, that you know, there's just this, wow, Lord, Father, you did that. And um, it, uh, it um, is humbling. I guess it's a good word. You 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 are put right in your right place. Let me maybe I can throw something in here. If we're talking about God being different, let's think of it this way: mankind, and you know, we talked about the continuum of there's there are those that really get it, and then those that really don't. The really don'ts we'll put out here, and that would be the philosophy. One of the one of them. But the philosophy, I would think, of naturalism, okay? By naturalism, naturalism, the philosophy of naturalism is that I only believe that which I can sense with my senses, okay? And that's all, that's the only thing that I can know, okay? So, it's out here, this is the knowing of nature, by nature, I'm not talking about the nice things we call nature, butterflies, uh, flowers, etc. Nature. No, I mean the whole system. That, that which is natural. It's natural. But what are we talking about? And what are we talking about with God? God is not part of nature. He, he is in nature. He is permeates all of nature. He's everywhere. You can't get away from him. He is the spirit that permeates everything. So, but he's not nature. He's holy. He's separate. He's different. So what we're talking about is not nature. When we're talking about God, it's super nature. How would you pronounce that? Supernatural. See, we're, we're talking about the supernatural, okay? And he's separate from that. It's nature, supernature. And we, I want you to be different. Why? How can I be different? But you're supernature. When he supernatures me, when I'm filled with his supernature, I'm, I walk in a supernature way. Go ahead, Stapes. We walk on water. <laughs> like Jesus did. Yeah. Um, another time when he delivered us and changed even our direction through changing our thoughts about where we were to be and delivered us physically from a car going through the waiting room where we were. I remember standing. It was so awesome just standing in the 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 waiting room of this vet office and going having to go in the back door because we we uh, yeah veterinarian office we had had to go in the back door because where we had been see would have been seat seated was a car had run through but God had changed our direction that morning and put us somewhere else and then brought us back to that place but I remember standing in that uh, that room and going god you just did this mm -hmm. and yeah it was there's been many times we've had things like that happen and there's just god you just intervened you just did in our yeah. life in a powerful way you just did this yeah and um i i remember that because you're standing there in this building and we were had been seated on in the waiting room on this couch with the dog. And to come back, <clears throat> we'd gone to eat, and God, we weren't going to eat. God changed the direction in that. That's the long story of the whole thing. But the, to come back and to describing the point of we were sitting there, 
And where we were sitting, there's now a car. And the wall and the glass and all of that stuff that was there, that is now there. It's there. It's not there now. But, I mean, it was there. And you're standing. I was seated there. I was right there. This thing was gonna, would have come in. Like she, <laughs> I just don't know how, what she did. But somehow she hit. She didn't have it in reverse. And she went, she went over a, a, a concrete wall, center block wall about that tall, over the top of that thing and into the waiting room of that veterinarian's office, which we had said, can we put the dog in the back? Yeah. God was watching yeah. out for the dog. Changing the dog ran in the back. Yeah. We went and left. And um, the next thing that the receptionist is knowing is she's asking someone in their car, may I help you? Uh, <laughs> We don't normally have drive up, but for you this morning, we're going to change it. Goodness, I can't imagine. <laughs> uh, nobody got hurt. God was watching over. But I'm telling you, it's just, oh, you just did that. Now, let me tell you something. He does the that's in our lives all the time. He does. He does the that's, but we just don't see it. it, it when you pray, God keep us safe. And you drive into town and drive back, you're going, you never think about it. You, you don't. But, wow, you just did that. It, it can, it, those are the feelings of awe and fear our Lord wants. That's different than the fear from the Lord that he gives to us. And we'll just read a few scriptures and, and closing this section. Let's, let's turn. We're gonna, it's going to be move quickly time here. We're going to start in, uh, in Psalms. Uh, Psalm 19, if you would turn there. Now, this, this is a, this is an entire teaching we've done on this, but uh, the, just real quickly, 19, Psalm 19, verse 9. Miss Davis, please. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Okay, you hear that? The fear of the Lord is... Being afraid of the Lord is clean? Do you understand? It does. The fear... What he's saying is, it's you're not when oh when you're afraid of the Lord that's clean. No, he's giving you his fear so that you will be what clean. And by the way, it endures forever. Psalm thirty four eleven, Miss Davis. Please, everyone, turn Psalm thirty four eleven. And twelve, please. Eleven and twelve. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Yeah. Um, keep, uh, maybe, uh, keep, keep your, your tongue, tongue from, from evil. What, what your, is, yeah, go ahead. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Okay. Let's, let's, I want you to, we'll look at it real quickly. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear, change the word of, from, okay? I mean, I, it, it's, it's not changing it. It's just the way that we understand it. The fear, I will teach you the fear from the Lord. Well, what's the first thing? Who's the man that desires life, loves length of the days, that he may say good? Well, here's, here's what the fear from the Lord does for you. It will keep your tongue from evil. When you become a gossip, a slanderer, a, you know, all, all it does, you can be blaming this person and that and you know all it does is it deepens the meditation that you have on evil and unforgiveness and it makes you more a more miserable wretch than you already were and more unclean more unclean yeah it's, it, and that's a very good way to put it more unclean keep your tongue god the fear from god will keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit the fear from god will do what Teach you to do what? Look what it says. Depart from evil. The fear from God will teach you to do good. And will do what? Have you to seek peace and pursue it. Uh, the fear from God is going to keep you away from the things that would be of non-peace, of conflict, of, of war. Okay, Psalm 111.10, please. We're just going to read a few more verses and, and then we'll, we'll stop here. Uh, one one eleven ten, Miss Davis. The fear of, 
from the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. Okay. Of course, that's telling you how to do the fear from the Lord too, how to gain it. But the fear from the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. What in the world could that possibly mean? It When the beginning of wisdom is God, what's he going to do? He's going to keep you from going into areas that he's going, no, you should fear that. It may not be something, should you be afraid of it? No, but you shouldn't do that. I don't know. Um, oh, I'm going to get into a, a, a partnership in business with somebody. And, of course, the Bible warns against that, but it's it says, and we're, you know, in today's economy, you're in it whether you like it or not, but the you may be thinking, I'm going to sign the dotted line with this person. But I've got this, I don't know, this funny... Uh, you get get the fear the fear from the Lord, and that's the beginning of wisdom in that particular. You need to back out. Why? He's giving you wisdom there. Okay, we're going to go to Proverbs. Read two of these, and then we'll come in for a landing. Proverbs one seven, and this one is very much the same as what we just read. Miss Davis. Yes. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah. The fear from the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And one last one, Proverbs 8, 13, please. The fear from the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance in the evil way, and the perverted mouth I hate. Do you see what's what's the, the fear from the Lord, the fear that belongs to him, but he's loaning to you, <clears throat> is to do what? Well, hate evil. Well, that's a good idea. You see, it's it's his fear that's that it's not that you hate evil. Why? Because you are evil, all of you people. No, it, it it this it it's a very natural thing. But when the super natural comes in, well, I hate that evil. The fear from the Lord makes me to hate the evil. It makes it makes me hate my own pride and my own arrogance and the evil way. The perverted mouth, I hate. Do you? Probably not. But when you have the fear from the Lord, uh, you will and uh, you can. Anyway, we will stop there uh, for today. Anybody have anything they want to bring up in any of this? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it was interesting last night when I felt like me and then should go on a run. So I was like, you should go, you know. Um, and I just felt like the Lord was like, you should take your phone. But it, I never like it never registers that it's the Lord when that happens. I know it's the fear from the Lord. And afterwards, it's like, that was what it was, you know. And I was like, no, I'm, it's really low percentage. I'll just let it charge. And then I almost felt no, I do know, like, the Lord was telling me, well, tell Nathan to get his phone then. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, like, forgot about it and moved on. And then Nathan later said that she felt like she should have brought his stick and didn't. Mm -hmm. And then we ran into the rattlesnake. No, I brought it over to Bunkhouse that we were going to meet, and then I totally forgot. So I was planning on bringing it. It's literally the yeah. one time I've gone out without a stick all semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway. Isn't amazing? Yeah, I'm thinking you. about that. And right after we killed huge rattlesnake we're like that was the lord both telling us and it is really neat. but he provided another stick and rocks and stuff to keep yeah, around here that's probably yeah. true yeah <laughs> the the bad news is you go reaching for a stick and it's you know it's been laying on the ground for two years and it shatters in your hand you're going and he's going <laughs> you know oh so, well praise the lord but that's really it really is true you know, we, we talk about listening to that still, small voice. We unfortunately don't, again, w with that, if you don't like being around rattlesnakes, and they are going to be through your entire life, whether you're here in Texas or the Antarctic. Uh, in the Antarctic, they're two-legged, um, <clears throat> as they are through most of the world. Learn the fear of the Lord. Now, how do you learn the fear of the Lord? I'm not going to go into it in depth right now, but it's through meditation. I mean, it is through keeping his commandments. You know, I, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Come, my children, and listen to the commandment. 
listen to the law. Listen to the, all the, and it over and over. It's the same thing. Of course, we're not going to try to go into that in this teaching right here, but it's a very important thing. And I, that's the, what you're, you're talking about. I think everybody here can identify with different times for this. Oh, I, sh- I should have done this. I should have done that. And uh, it's important. I wanted to, yeah, something on that. It, we just don't believe that he's with us. It's the bottom line. It's our unbelief. And the Lord has reminded me lately, I am with you. The Holy Spirit is our helper. It says our helper. And we think, well, that's just he brings scripture to mind and he tells me things about the word, but he's our helper alongside us. And he will say, don't turn. It's the fear from the Lord, but he'll be guiding us, speaking to us. And the Lord has reminded me lately, I am with you. That means that when I remind you, oh, get this at the store, or when I remind you, oh, you need to go call that person, that's me helping you throughout the day. It's the Lord with us. But we often don't believe he's with us. We think we he's with us when I'm just meditating on scripture. Or, you know, when I'm praying or something, but he's with me and he wants me to be familiar that, with that, that he's with me to help me all through the day. It's the Lord in his presence going with me. Jesus said, the father's with me and, you know, you're going to leave me alone, but the, I'm not alone because the father's with me. And we need to meditate on Lord, you are with me. Cause me to receive that, the reality of that truth in my life, that all through the day, it says he's among those that help us. So when someone helps me in the day, the Lord is among those that help me. And that meditation of, Lord, you're with me. Forgive me for doubting your presence with me throughout the day because Jesus walked, he said, the Father's with me, always with me because I always do the things that please him. Well, now because of his life in me, he's working, wanting me to know, just like he walked with the knowing the Father was with him. That's the faith of the Son of God in our, his Father's faithfulness to him being formed in me. That's the mind of Christ. We've been given that. Well, what does that mean? We don't meditate on, I have his mind. What is his mind? My father's faith. To me, he's with me all the time. That's part of his mind. And the, to meditate on these things, Lord, I thank you that you are with me. That is what even was said, you know, that we're not to fear what people can do to us because, and Gabe mentioned this, the Lord is with me. We need to meditate on those things. The scripture, that's his words to us. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. But do I listen to that and make it my meditation and make it, Lord, do that in me, cause me to believe and I repent of my unbelief and change my mind. May I receive the mind, in fact, of Christ. The renewing of my mind to the reality that God is with me and the Holy Spirit is alongside me throughout the day helping me. And he wants me to be sensitive to his spirit, his voice, like he was saying, take this stick and pick up this phone. He was saying those things. That's the Lord helping us throughout the day. Yep. And and the reason that we make you carry the stick is because we fear the Lord before you feared the Lord. We understand that the snakes are there. But that's what God, the fear from the Lord is about. The snakes are there. Uh, and it's, it's a, a very real thing. Praise the Lord for it. Can I say something? Please. Um, I was reading Gabe's book, and he was talking about how the Lord is always with us. Um, but he's like, but everyone, you know, you're always in the Lord's with us, but we rarely fellowship with him throughout the day. He's saying that that's the difference. And I think that's what you were just talking about. Of really recognizing him and you know i should have like listened to the voice but i'm so um used to just okay you know like mm-hmm. that was a nice thought let's go on to the next thing and not uh, just thinking about it in in proverbs it always says oh so many times like fear of the lord fear from the lord and then it always says listen uh, and it has a lot of like listen and choosing mm-hmm. the fear from mm-hmm. the lord and I think that's a big part of it and the fellowship with him and recognizing him. So we don't 
I think it's our unbelief a lot of times that we don't realize so many things are from the Lord that he's wanting to give to us. And we're just like, well, I know better, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, Israel didn't recognize that God was carrying them the 40 years. It says, I carried you these 40 years. And so it's just asking God, God, do that in me. May I receive the mind of Christ in these things and recognize your faithfulness to me. It's his covenant, but, you know, it talks about where to keep his covenant. Well, that means I'm to remember that he said, I'm going to be all of these things to you. I am everything for you and your sufficiency at all times. So it's all about meditation. So. And that is, is true. You know, with what you were saying, you see how, and this is the way this thing works, how quickly we go to a natural thought we we uh, we rationalize it in our own mind and suddenly realize as a man thinks in his heart oh I don't need the phone so is he and the phone gets left behind and the stick gets left behind and take Nathan out back and whack him a while let's go to prayer oh wait I'm sorry there was a hand but all I saw was this movement weird thing and Go ahead, please. Yeah, what I was not on, I think there was a, an example of uh, being around the Lord, I was working with a person, and you kind of just get that feeling discerning. It's like, okay, who, who is this type of person? And I could just kind of tell that they were a negative person and just kind of murmuring. But then as I kind of continue to observe from afar also notice that this person would be like oh i like your sweater oh i like this and i like mm -hmm. that and just kind of seeing all of those things come together it was just like the lord would say to me ah, you might want to kind of keep your distance from that <laughs> um and so i just that came to my mind it's the fear of the lord mm -hmm. yeah i think you will as you begin to realize, and this morning we've really kind of made a separation of how are we supposed to be living life versus the way we live it. This, the, these things that we're talking about, reasons for them, the reason we talk about meditation is, is so that you, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons, is so that you will, when you hear the Master's voice, remember we talk about that in the, in the Facebook, I think it's the first chapter, the bomb will drop. The bomb will drop. It's going to drop. Uh, welcome to life. The bomb is going to drop. Now, are you going to know when the master's voice happens, or are you not? Are you going to respond to it, or are you not? Uh, anyway, uh, it's going to drop. Yeah, but Darlene Rose would say, and the Lord told me, and the Lord's reminded me, I'm often, I often say that because I know his voice, but there are times that I don't know his voice, and this is all what he's teaching us to be sensitive to his voice, but she'd say, and the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that, and, and because she was familiar with his voice, and he wants us to know his voice, my sheep hear my voice, and that's, you know, he's teaching us, it's the voice of of the shepherd that he's training us to listen to and not go our own way, but to really, Lord, help me to walk with you. Our own way, naturally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the normal nature going our own way versus the super nature. Mm -hmm. Amen.